This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Warhammer the Old World video. So since the recent announcement of Warhammer the Old World, a lot of people have been understandably quite hyped up. We're going back to square bases, we're gonna have our old miniatures, and of course we're getting some new ones too. Of course, many people with the old miniatures are very happy to be able to use their old minis, as that means that they'll already have an army to begin with, and some people have contacted me about these old minis, because yes, Games Workshop still sell a lot of the old miniatures, meaning that if you wanted to actually play Old World, and you wanted to start your armies now, you could technically do so, and have it a bit of a head start whilst you wait for the official release. Now, of course, there has been a lot of changes to these miniatures, mostly by name, and a lot of people are a bit confused as to what is what, seeing as most of these minis have been moved to Age of Sigmar. So what I want to do in this video is outline all the miniatures from Warhammer Fantasy Battles which are still available in the Games Workshop store, any friendly local game stores where you can get some discounts and so on, and see if you can find anything that you actually want to use before the game actually launches and prepare your armies in advance. I'm actually buying a few miniatures myself as there's a few things I want to fill out on certain rosters to prepare myself too. There's going to be a lot to discuss here, miniatures, dice and all these other things including square bases. But before we jump into a massive amount of information, let's just check out our video sponsor, Surfshark VPN. So I spend a lot of time at my PC, whether it's recording Total War footage or painting my miniatures. Yes guys, I do paint my miniatures. One thing I like to do is watch TV whilst I'm working on videos, and particularly The Walking Dead, but unfortunately since I live in Gibraltar, there's this weird thing with Netflix that I just can't see it. Thankfully Surfshark allows me to change my virtual location to the United States where The Walking Dead is available, which I need to catch up a little bit and rewatch some episodes as the new and last season is coming out very soon. Surfshark is safe and easy to use, I mean I'm not tech savvy whatsoever and I can use it, anyone else can, and we've partnered up with Surfshark so if you use the code GRUDGES, which is on screen right now, with our special link which can be found in the description below, you'll be able to get 83% off your subscription and 3 months extra for free. The internet's a weird place and of course keeping your connection secure is always the best thing you can do, and if you can get a good deal, well that also works out too. A big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video, and now let's jump in with a lot of miniature talk. Alright, so we're going to have a lot of information here, and I'm going to divide everything into its own respective races and factions with some miscellaneous stuff at the end, given anything that you may want to know too. And obviously since we're covering a lot of stuff, I won't be able to have everything linked in the description below, but I will clearly state what the name is for each miniature in both Warhammer Fantasy and of course Age of Sigmar, so if you go on to gamesworkshop.com or any reseller website, you'll be able to find them without a problem. I'll also go into detail regarding some miniatures, which may not feature in Old World given the time frame that we know that Warhammer the Old World is set in. Some stuff was just not available during that time. But with all that being said, I'm not going to start in any particular order, but we are going to start with the Orcs and Goblins as those are the ones I've recently been building up and painting because, yeah, it's an army that it's always been lacking on my part. Interestingly enough, there are a lot of Orcs and Goblin units that are still available officially, so let's just check them out fully. The Savage Big Boss is, of course, a Savage Orc Big Boss. You can even see in the artwork it's still represented with its square base. On the tabletop you could use it as a lord or hero choice and I'm assuming it will be the exact same way for Old World too. Madcap Shamans are of course Night Goblin Shamans, once again still represented with their square base, so you can use them as either lords or heroes, usually as a lord choice as you want that level 4 spellcaster, hopefully that stays the same in Old World too. The Wurgog Prophet is actually Wurzag's model, but seeing as the time frame is taking us a few hundred years back, I very much doubt that Wurzag will be alive, though you're still going to be able to use this as a shaman for the Savage Orcs. I mean, that's what I actually do right this, this moment when it comes to Warhammer Fantasy 8th Edition, because the name characters were just so horrendously overcosted. Maniac Widnob is once again another Savage Orc shaman, but this time mounted on a boar. If you want to actually have a mount option, here you go, it's usable without a problem, and yes, it is an old school fantasy model, despite the fact that it's got a circular base now. This might be a common appearance, so I'm just making sure that you guys are aware. 
Grot, spider riders are actually forest goblin spider riders. They were very popular back in the day, and I'm assuming they will be once again too. Stabbers are night goblins. It's actually an updated kit, but they still fit on square bases, and it's what most people do. In fact, the large majority of my night goblin army is actually focused on these. They fit very well, and they rank up without a problem. The stabber box also has the choice of being able to have hand weapons and shield, or spears and shield, so it's up to you. The same would go with the shooters. It's a newer version, but it's just night goblin archers and yeah, range weapons, always kinda important in one fantasy. Another sad one, Loon Boss with Great Cave Squig. Yep, this is Scarsnick and Gobbler. Unfortunately again, I doubt that Scarsnick is going to be alive during this point of the timeline, so you could use it as a different character. Honestly, you could even use it as a unit filler because it's actually on a 40mm base, which is enough for four standard goblins. Scuttle Boss on a Gigantic Spider is actually a Goblin Boss on a Gigantic Spider. Once again, you can see the square base, and yeah, it just looks kinda cool. Savage Uruks are Savage Orcs with Spears, I mean it's very easy to tell, and if you want a Savage Orc army, these are your mainstay. Keep in mind with Orcs back in the day, there was no extra model for biggins, so what you did is upgrade them via points, I'm assuming it might stay the same way, so your Savage Uruks would also be Savage Uruk biggins. Same goes once again for the Savage Uruk Moor Boys and Savage Uruk Arrow Boys. These are just Savage Orcs with either bows or hand weapons, and they are the exact same unit, it's the same model too. Savage Boar Boy Maniacs and Savage Boar Boys are pretty much just Savage Orcs riding on giant boars. These are with the hand weapons or with spear weapons, it's your choice here. Ard Boys, okay so these are Black Orcs. They actually had a metal variant back in the day, however this is the exact same cast just turned into plastic and it's just so much easier to handle. I've actually shelved my metal ones and now just use the plastic ones because plastic is just so much better. The Arachnorok Spider is, well you guessed it, an Arachnorok Spider. Yep. Nothing else there. It's a big model. It's kind of like a centerpiece, and it's always been kind of cool. Man Crusher Gargants are giants, and they're a multi purpose kit. You can use them for beastmen, orcs, chaos, and just so many different factions were able to use them. And it's a nice kit. It's aged really nicely, too. And finally, Fellwater Trogoths, which is a river troll. It's one of my favorite models from the Orcs and Goblins range because it just looks so drastically different from everything else. Unfortunately, that's pretty much it. Not all of the roster actually made it to Age of Sigma or was eventually phased out. Now there are a few Age of Sigmar models which are updated versions of the old ones which would be able to fit so I'm going to mention them here as it will be able to allow you to just have some extra minis and you know conversion pieces are always cool it's a big part of the Warhammer hobby. Loon Boss on a Giant Cave Squig is an updated version of a very old model of a Night Goblin on a Giant Cave Squig. It's actually just very nice looking now and it's so updated and it fits in its old intended base so you've got no issues there. The same also goes for Mangler Squigs, which unfortunately might be a tad too big. If you just move around the miniature though, you're fine. I know someone who does it, and it fits in its intended base without too much of an issue. The War Dork I don't remember too much. A part of me is telling me this is an old Warhammer Fantasy miniature, but even then, it can be used as a Savage or Great Shaman or Standard Shaman, and it looks pretty cool, so why not? The Loon Boss itself can be a Night Goblin War Boss. It fits on a 20 mil base, though you might have to jiggle it around a bit and maybe cut a few bits off that scenic base, to be honest. The Weird Knob Shaman is completely new, but it looks very cool, and once again, Savage Orc Shaman, or maybe even just a Great Shaman, it really depends. Though, since it's new, it's much more detailed than the older ones, and it just looks a lot better. Fanatics are, of course, an updated version of Night Goblin Fanatics, and yeah, they work exactly the same way. They do come with a larger base, because actually, these do have to use a circular base, but you just get the smaller ones and you're perfectly fine. Do be advised, however, that the chains here are very thin and they do break rather easily, I just want to warn you guys there. But that's pretty much it in regards to Orcs and Goblins, yeah there's a few other models but none of them are from Warhammer Fantasy and none of them from the other ones I could see them being used as backward compatible or something, whereas these were just some ones that have just been updated. Let's move on to the Ogre Kingdoms, which will probably be the easiest one to explain as their naming conventions didn't really change. First up we have the Ogre Gluttons, which are the standard Ogre Balls, these normally have different different types of weapon loadouts such as a standard hand weapon, additional hand weapons or even a type of shield. It also comes with a few Noblars so you can use that for your Noblar units but you have standard Noblars don't you worry. Iron Guts are of course Ogre Iron Guts and you can see them represented on their square base there's not much there changed so yeah easy to explain. 
Lead belches are exactly the same as they were in Warhammer Fantasy, so there's no real need to go too much into it. Noblars, once again, Noblars the same as they were in Warhammer Fantasy. I don't think too many people used them back in the day, but hey, they were very cheap in points, so if you want to bring them as a filler, you can. Next we have the Firebelly, which is an Ogre Firebelly. Once again, no naming changes there. The only difference is that this is a caster which has the Law of Fire, as the Ogres only had access to the Law of the Great Moor and the Law of Fire. Next we have the Thunder Tusk. Once again, exactly the same. A big monstrous unit, which could also be a mount option too. It's pretty cool, and it had a lot of special abilities in 8th edition, so I hope that this does carry over, and yeah, has the exact same abilities, because it was fun. Gorgas are once again Gorgas, so nothing changes there. They're cool, they look weird, and hey, why not? Okay, man-eaters are an interesting one. I'm only going to put one on screen, but there's actually a lot of man-eaters in the website for Games Workshop and all the resellers, because man-eaters were one of these weird mixed units. It's not like you've seen in Total War Warhammer. You could mix them up. I'm assuming it might stay the same way. If not, you could just use them as characters, because there's just so many different types of looking ones that, yeah, you have like loads of different options. The Butcher, a spellcaster for the Law of the Great Moor. Again, this is very much expected to make its return because, well, yeah, it's the specific Law of Magic only available to the Ogres, you know? Icefall Yetis are Yetis, so yeah, once again, no need to explain. The Ogre Kingdoms are very self-explanatory, so that actually works out quite nicely. Slaughtermaster. Okay, so this was actually a character known as Scrag the Slaughterer. Again, I don't think he's going to be alive during this point of the timeline, but you could use him for pretty much anything else. A unit filler, a character, anything really. It just looks kind of cool, and it's one of those old-school Grimdark models. Huskard on a Stonehorn. Okay, so this was a character mounted on a Stonehorn, and it could be taken as that, or as a just standard Stonehorn monster. You had a bit of an option there. It looks cool, it's a big beastie, and yeah, ogres. Mournfang Pack or Mournfang Riders? These were absolutely terrifying on the tabletop, as they could rip up lightly armored units without a problem, and believe me, I played Skaven a lot, so when I faced up against these things, yeah, I had a little bit of a panic. Mancrusher Gargants, again, are giants, and this is going to be the last time I mention them, because, yeah, they just feature in loads of different armies, so, yeah, there's no point. Frost Sabers are literally just Saber Tusks. All they did was paint them in blue. Yeah. The Iron Blasters, again, an Iron Blaster. It's just a very powerful cannon being pulled by a Rhino, so what's not to like? And finally, the Noblar Scrap Launcher, which is once again a Noblar Scrap Launcher. This is a catapult pulled by a Rhino once again. Well, it's actually a Rhinox, but yeah. That's pretty much all that's left available on the Games Workshop website, but there's a few models from Age of Sigmar specifically that can be used as they're the same scale and look exactly the same. First up, we have the Orgor Moor Tribes Tyrant, which can be used as a tyrant or a bruiser. This is your basic melee lord or hero choice. And yeah, it looks cool. The only thing different is it's got a Stormcast head there, but with a little bit of green stuff, you just get rid of it. You know, clip it off and that's it. Or use a different skull instead. Okay, I was wrong. Yeah, there was one more model that I completely forgot about that was an original thing, which is the Icebrow Hunter. This is what you use the Sabercats with, so yeah, it's fine cast though, so be warned that's kinda... Yeah, fine cast isn't great. Yeah, it can break, you have to rebend it sometimes and so on. Keep in mind that a lot of old fantasy minis might be fine cast if they're heroes specifically. Usually those are just the single model packs, which are just kinda tiny. Now let's move on to the vampire counts. I'm a big fan of this army, so yeah, there's a lot to discuss. Nagash is of course Nagash, though I really doubt that we're going to see this iteration, as of course this is the end times variant. We don't know if they might retcon stuff to make it look like he always looked like this, but we're going to have to wait and see. I wouldn't say get this miniature unless you want to paint him up, because he's very finicky and we don't know if he's actually going to be available in the old world. Though keep in mind there is a part of the timeline where he does come back for a while, so mm, never know. Alright, Kripgas Courtiers, a fancy name for Kripgals, that's what they are. They were a swarm unit with poison and so on, and they were fairly popular. Varghoof Courtiers are just basic vampire Varghoofs, so yeah. I don't know why a lot of vampire stuff is called a courtier for some reason, I do need to check the lore books for Age of Sigma for that. Crypt Horrors, simple enough, Crypt Horrors. And yeah, they're kind of fun, great cast, it's actually aged really well too, so yeah. White King with Baleful Tomb Blade. It's a White King, so it was a hero choice, and you could kit it out to be quite a strong melee fighter. Cairn Wraiths could be a unit, or they could be a hero, and they were fairly good, they're ethereal and so on, always fairly popular and usually seen in most armies. Necromancer is, well, yeah, a Necromancer, and you can use that as a lord or hero choice, so yeah, spellcasters. 
Tomb Banshees were an upgradable unit for the current Wraith units, so yeah, this is like a uh, champion in a sense. Spirit Hosts, yeah, these are the End Times version, but they look much better than the original vanilla ones, so yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to use these, they just look pretty cool, and they are a little bit finicky to glue together, but other than that, they're really easy to paint. Hex Raves, as usual, Hex Raves, very popular in the tabletop back in the day, as they had a lot of different rules, and they were very, very deadly. Black Knights are indeed just basic Black Knights, so your standard cavalry unit for the Vampire Count armies. Graveguard are again Graveguard, where you can have them as sword and board, or with a great weapon, so it's your choice within this kit. Varg Heist, no change there, they're just Varg Heist. A lot of units stayed with the same name, whereas some of them were just given something completely different, so at least the generic ones you can more or less pinpoint because you played Total War, or you used to play Warhammer Fantasy. Morghars were a End Times unit, and they were specifically for the Legions of Nagash, however, it might be possible that they could be used if Nagash does end up as a playable faction in the Old World, as they were established to be there in lore for many thousands of years, so it's very, very possible, and they look kinda cool. Mortis Engine is, of course, a Mortis Engine. Buffs and debuffs, and quite powerful with a lot of different rules too. Very fun to use, and a little complicated to paint, I must say. The Coven Throne is a mount option for some vampire characters. It's very fun, and hey, it looks very, very cool. Again, same name, nothing different there. Manfred and Neferata, both very popular Vampire Count characters, though these are their end time variants, they are mounted on a mount which we will likely not see, it very much depends, and yeah, what I personally have done with these characters is I've put them on their own mounts, rather than putting them on these big boys, I decided to put them on skeleton horses and so on, the only thing is obviously you have to kind of do a bit of converting, and yeah, don't do this unless you're getting the models cheap, because don't buy a whole kit just for a very very basic conversion. We've got the corpse cart here so if you've played Total War you know what this does, it's exactly the same thing and has all the different variants so you can pick what you want to build. Zombie dragons and terror geists. There's a lot of different options on the website as you can use them as mounts or as actual units, it very much depends on how you want to use them. They're obviously timeless classics, they look really good. The model I'd say has aged very very well, uh, maybe not so much the zombie dragon because it's built off the framework of a terror geist, but yeah, still very fun. But that's pretty much all the old Warhammer Fantasy Vampire Count units, but let's look over some Age of Sigmar specific ones that may be able to be used in Old World. We've got the Abhorrent Arch Regent. This is a Strigoi, and it fits on a 20mm base. It really doesn't need too much, you just might have to weigh down the base a little bit with a coin and that's it. Felbats are just an upgraded version of the old Felbat model. It's literally the same size and it fits on its intended base, just in a very higher quality standard, which makes it look really, really good. I've actually got a few on order right now. The same can be said about the Direwolves. They fit on their intended base, and they just look so much better than the older ones. So honestly, I think that these are going to be the ones that are going to be used in Old World anyway. So yeah, if you want to play Vampire Counts, these are the best ones to go for. Deadwalker Zombies are an updated kit of the old zombie kit. Now, they're a bit more detailed, and I've been told that it's still very possible to rank them up. It very much depends on how you manage to do it. If you're looking to play Vampire Counts and you're looking at zombies, I'd suggest googling and going onto various websites for Warhammer Fantasy, some Facebook groups and so on, as someone might have posted a picture of these being ranked up. Always make sure with the new models to be able to see if they can be ranked up before you buy them. The same can be said for Blood Knights, which are just a massive upgrade compared to the old ones. Unfortunately, no musician, but a little bit of kit bashing here and there can fix that up. I've been told that these rank up fairly well, but like I said with the zombies, check to see if they can be. Just ask in a random Facebook group dedicated to Warhammer Fantasy, or the subreddits, or whatever, you know? And lastly we have the Black Coach, which is a newer version. It can fit on its intended base, but you're gonna have to be a bit um, creative when you're putting it on and building it up, as it might just be a bit too large. Okay, let's move on to the Dwarfs. Unfortunately, not a lot of them here, but hey, Either way, let's still cover them. Longbeards are still longbeards, and yeah, very heavy, great weapon units. They can do a lot of damage, and that's what you want from a dwarf. Rune Lord is once again a Rune Lord, but you can also use it as a Rune Smith, so Lord or a hero option. The Warden King makes me very sad because this is Belagar Ironhammer, but hey, this is a character that you could use as a Lord or a hero option, as it's likely that Belagar isn't alive during this point in the timeline. I'm pretty sure he isn't, at least. The Cocksmith is another character, but I'm not sure 
that he's actually alive during the timeline here too, so you can use him as a master engineer or a basic engineer. Hammerers, same as the long beards, just with big hammers instead and they can do a lot of damage. Gyrocopters, flying, they're able to do a lot of damage, moving around fairly quickly with a little machine gun, and usually used to put them behind enemy lines. It was this whole tactic where you'd make your enemy flee through them and they'd take a lot of damage. Of course the same thing can be said about the gyro bombers because, well, it's very much the same thing, the only difference is it drops bombs onto the enemies. Next we have the Iron Drakes, which are flamer units, they would do fire damage and they were very very good to use against, say for example, anything that had regeneration or against tree units. And lastly, Iron Breakers, these are your tanky higher tier units that you'd put in the front line to be able to deal with the enemy, as of course, sword and board, very useful, shield is always very useful too. Unfortunately, there's not much for the dwarves here, um, yeah, they did not receive a lot of love, there's a lot of other sub-factions, but that's pretty much it. I've looked through both the other sub-factions and it's mostly just new stuff that doesn't really fit with the essence of Warhammer Fantasy, so I don't think that we're going to see anything going backward compatible, although the big gunships might be cool. Let's move on to the High Elves, where there's even less than the Dwarves, unfortunately. First we have the Sisters of the Watch, which are actually Sisters of Avalon. If you've played with them in Total War, you pretty much know how they can act on the tabletop. Very, very good archers, and yeah, they can do a lot of damage. Phoenix Guard are Phoenix Guard, and yeah, you know, Halberds, they're very powerful. They're actually pretty good on the tabletop, much better than they are in Total War. Shadow Warriors are of course Shadow Warriors, so not much to explain here, as they pretty much have the same look. And lastly we have the Phoenix Kit, which is actually really good value for money, because not only can you turn this into a Flame Spire Phoenix or a Frost Heart Phoenix, but you can also have the Mounted Rider, as you can see, on foot too as a Anointed of Asurian, so you've already got a hero character there too if you want one, and the model did age fairly well. Now let's move on to the Dark Elves, there's a lot more here, and there's a lot of different options. We've got Dark Shards, which are a crossbow unit, the same as they are named in Age of Sigma, is the same name they had in Warhammer Fantasy and in Total War, so yeah, easy enough for this. Sorceress is again a Sorceress, it's a Lord or a Hero option for spellcasting, and for Dark Elves, trust me, you want spellcasting. Assassin, once again, yeah, it's the same thing, it's an Assassin. This model is actually Shadowblade, which I think is alive at this point in the timeline, but you can use him as a standard Assassin too. Black Ark Fleetmaster is once again a hero character, and yeah, looks cool, it's aged very well, it's a very good model, and it also comes with a square base as it's a scenic base. Black Ark Corsairs, again, nothing has changed, it's exactly the same thing as they were in Warhammer Fantasy. Quick word of advice though, these are very, very horrible to rank up, and they've always been, so I'm just putting that up there, just in case you decide to buy these models and then get very angry at me. Even I have a lot of trouble trying to rank these up, they just do not rank well at all. Drakespawn Knights are actually called one Knights, it's just a bit of a name change, but everything is there as you need it. Dread Spears and Bleak Swords are exactly the same as always, and they are actually from the same kit too. The Scourge Runner Chariot kit is also exactly the same. The thing is that this kit can also be a Cold One Chariot too, which is known as a Drakespawn Chariot in Age of Sigmar. Both of them had their perks in Warhammer Fantasy, so it's literally just up to you. Though in my experience, the Scourge Runner Chariot was better than the Cold One Chariot, but that's just probably personal preference. Blackguard, okay, so these were Blackguard of Nargaron, there's just a dropping of just a few letters, but it's exactly the same thing. The same thing can be said about Executioners, which are actually Hagen F Executioners. Nothing's changed with the Sisters of Slaughter, they are exactly the same. The only thing is, be warned, just like the Black Art Corsairs, they can be a little difficult to rank up. Sorceress and a Black Dragon is pretty much just, that's what it is, it's a Sorceress and a Black Dragon if you want to have a flying mount option. They're pretty cool and the mount looks cool, though the dragons will need to be updated I think because the cast is kind of aged. The same thing goes for the Dreadlord on a Black Dragon, it's just the same kit too, so if you have one mounted on a Black Dragon, you can actually put the other one on a horse if you want, as they do fit really well and it's all up to you really, if you want just magnetize them and then you can just switch them out, and yeah, easy. Witch Elves are actually Witch Elves, and yeah, they rank up fairly well, though I would suggest magnetizing the bases to make it a little easier, because they will fall about. 
Hag Queen on a Cauldron of Blood is literally just that, it's a Cauldron of Blood, and the Hag Queen itself is a Death Hag, so what I'd say is put the Death Hag on a small base, and you can just interchange. The same thing goes with the Blood Rack Shrine, as the Medusa itself can be used as an individual unit, so just put it on a base and just stick it on top there. So yeah, it's just easy. And again, because this is all the same kit, with the Slaughter Queen on a Cauldron of Blood. Now this is an important thing to note, as the Slaughter Queen itself is actually the Crone Queen Hellebron. So yeah, you put her on a base and you can have her on foot or you can have her mounted. Doomfire Warlocks are again Doomfire Warlocks. These are a must-have if you're playing as the Dark Elves. Believe me, they're very, very, very useful. And believe it or not, if you like cheese, Dark Riders on the tabletop were absolutely amazing. Yeah, I know it's hard to believe because they're not really that good in Total War, but yeah, they're very good, they're fast cavalry as long as you don't have them with shields, and I'm assuming that they'll stay exactly the same way. Okay, let's move on now to the Wood Elves. There's a few here, mostly named characters, and no ranged units, which is sad because, yeah, Wood Elves. But first we have some Eternal Guard, these are the pretty basic frontline units, and yeah, they look cool, the cast has aged very well, they just look nice. Branch Wraith is a spellcaster character, it's actually a really nice looking model, I've actually got a few of them myself, yeah. The Sylvan F Tree Lord Ancient is actually the old end times version of the Tree Lord, so I'm assuming that this one will be backward compatible, because the old one, like the really old Warhammer Fantasy one, was just super derpy. The kit itself has got a few variants which can make it look very different, so it's just very customizable. The same thing can also be said by that same kit, where the spirit of Durfu here is, well, it's Durfu, but in Age of Sigma it's the spirit of Durfu, because, I don't know. But of course, this is a named character, so yeah, and he's very much alive during the time that we're going to be going on in the old world. This Branch Wraith character is actually Draker, and yeah, again, it's going to be a character that is very much alive during this point in the old world, so yeah, you can pick her up. It's a good looking model, fairly old school style in terms of design, and yeah, timeless classic. The Nomad Prince is actually the character known as Araloth, who is very much alive during this point in the timeline, I believe, but if not, you can just use it as a Glade Lord, so yeah, you've actually got something there, you know? Wildwood Rangers are still Wildwood Rangers, and yeah, they look cool, they've got this really nice design about them, and the paint scheme that they're always represented to have is just really cool, it makes them pop really well. Sylvan F Dryads are Dryads, they're just known as Sylvan F in Age of Sigma, and yeah, they've aged extremely well, and I don't see no reason why they wouldn't be playable in Old World, as they are pretty much the frontline, well, the heavy duty frontline for the Wood Elves. And the last kit here is the Sisters of the Fawn and the Wild Rangers, both are from the exact same kit, so you can decide what you want to build, but yeah, they've aged very, very well well. These multi-purpose kits are very common in Warhammer Fantasy, and they've been more common in, like, say, for example, uh, Warhammer 40,000 too, lately. Unfortunately, a lot of stuff is missing from the Wood Elf roster, but as you've noticed, a lot of the races have that issue. Okay, now it's time to talk about, likely, the main focus of Warhammer the Old World, of course, the Empire. Now, if you're interested in playing the Empire and want to buy the old miniatures, I advise that you pay attention to this, because there's a few models that will show up that we do need to discuss. First, we have the Free Guild Greatswords, which are just basic Empire Greatswords, so yeah, nothing's changed there, the cast has held up quite well, and yeah, it looks nice. Free Guild Pistoliers and Outriders, as you can expect, Imperial Pistoliers and Outriders. You can tell that a lot of this Empire stuff is basically just going to show itself with the old school square bases. These two are from the exact same kit, so you can pick and choose what you want to build up. Again, Free Guild handgunners are handgunners, yeah, but it's just basic things. A lot of this stuff is just Free Guild this, Free Guild that, but it's just Imperial. Exactly the same with a Free Guild General, as that's an Empire General, simple enough. And once again, with the Free Guild Crossbowmen, yeah, Imperial Crossbowmen. And finally, once again, with the Free Guild Guard, which are Imperial Swordsmen or Imperial Halberdiers and even Sword and Board. The kit actually has for a lot of different options. This is actually one of the more common kits for the Empire and it has three different weapon options, so you can pick and choose, but each of the weapons pretty much do different things in combat. Now this one we have to talk about quite heavily, the Colligate Arcane Mystic Battle Wizards, it's a bit of a mouthful, it's actually a kit which can be all eight different wizards from the Colleges of Magic, but this is the thing, if we're going back to the time of Free Emperors, 
The Colleges of Magic will not be there unless they've drastically rewritten the lore. You'll still have magic in the form of hedge wizards, which one model there could be a hedge wizard, but yeah, don't buy a kit for one miniature because they're kind of expensive. I still think that we'll probably see the Colleges in one way, shape or form, maybe in its founding, so it's still very possible. If not, just buy these for display if you want them for display, because they are very pretty models, but that's pretty much it. The same thing can be said about the Celestial Hurricaneum, which is attached to the Colleges of Magic, so we don't know if that's going to be there or not, and I really hope so, because it's very pretty and it's aged very well. And lastly, the same thing once again with the Luminarch of Hish. This is the thing, a lot of these miniatures did get linked to something in lore and so on, and if we're going back really far, some of these things just won't exist. We've got flagellants here, which, yep, again, they are the same thing, they look cool, they've aged eh, fairly well, not too great, but yeah. It's something that you're going to be using a lot if you like those uh, Faith Steel and Gunpowder builds. Hellblaster Voligon, a very popular war machine in both Total War and the Tabletop. It's aged very well, barring, I'd say, the crew, if anything. But yeah, very cool, and it's available to buy. Same thing as the Hellstorm Rocket Battery. It's, it's still there, it's not really changed much, and yeah, it's a timeless classic. It does a lot of damage. In Total War, it's a bit better than the Tabletop, though, I will tell you that. Steam Tanks are still available, and they should still be in the timeline, because they were made a little before the whole time of Free Emperors, I believe. They should still be there, and if they're not, I'm assuming that Games Workshop would rewrite the lore, because, yeah, very, very popular unit. Okay, Free Guild General on a Griffin. Well, this is actually called Franz on Deathclaw, but, yeah, Franz is not going to be alive during this period, so you can use him as a general, and that's pretty much it. It's a core model, it's aged very, very well, and I would imagine this to be a centerpiece for many people's armies. And finally, from that very same kit, you have the Battle Mage on a Griffin, where I'm imagining that they'll turn that Battle Mage, which is from the Amber College, into some sort of Hedge Wizard, because it makes a lot of sense, and yeah, it's a cool model, I don't see why people won't want to use it. Alright, now we're going to jump onto the Lizardmen, which is... I think the most complete army that was transferred from Warhammer Fantasy all the way to Age of Sigmar, nothing's really changed there, which is... Good and sad at the same time, because the Lizardmen really need model updates. So the Stegodon's still there, and it's just called a standard Stegodon, we're all cool over that. The Saurus Oldblood is still a Saurus Oldblood, and it should still come with its old square scenic base. A Saurus Scar Veteran on a cold one is exactly the same thing too. It's actually just one of these things that doesn't change much, and you can use it as a old one too. Skin Priest with a Feathered Cloak is a Skin Priest, you can use it as a Spellcaster, because that's what it really much is. A Saurus Astrolith Bearer. Okay, so this is one of the few things which is actually a Banner Bearer. So this is a Scar Veteran with a Battle Standard. And yeah, take advantage of it because it's very rare. I think only the Skaven have their Battle Standard Bearer too. So yeah, you've got to get it. Okay, next, Chameleon Skinks. Once again, still Chameleon Skinks. So yeah, we can pass by this quickly. The Saurus Eternity Warden. This is a named character known as Chakax. And yeah... Uh, he's going to be alive for this timeline because Chakax is ancient, so yeah. The Skink Star Priest is just another variant of the Skink Priest, it fits on the base no problem, and looks a little better than the feathered one, to be honest. Same thing, Salamander Hunting Pack, nothing's changed there either, it looks good, a bit dated, even the Skinks are a bit dated, but yeah. Salamanders are quite dated as a model, and so are the Skinks, but yeah, you're gonna need them, they're quite powerful. Saurus Knights are just basically called one cavalry, so yeah, again, nothing too much of an issue. Same thing with the Razor Dawn Hunting Pack, once again, dated models, but yeah, same thing. Skinks look a little bit better, these are the standard Skinks, which have a few different variants. Uh, the models are okay, they've aged fairly well. And you're going to use a decent amount of them, to be honest, because they're very flexible. Again, Saurus Warriors, very much the same thing. They've got different weapon options, such as Sword and Board, well, Mason Board, and Spear and Board. So, yeah, flexible, bit dated. They'll probably get an update further down the line, but they haven't yet in Age of Sigmar, which is a bit strange. The Skink Star Priest is actually a named character, one of the few that we still have available to us, and that is Tetoeko. So, if you want that character, he should still be alive. Yeah, no, he's definitely alive at this point in the timeline and yeah he looks good it's a nice model why not saurus guard these are actually temple guard 
and yeah, higher ranged, higher tier units, very powerful and pretty much very elite. Croxigors, same thing, nothing's really changed there, they've just, yeah, they look pretty old. Slan Starmaster is a Slan Mage Priest, and you can turn this into a lot of different types of Slan, and yeah, it's a good looking model, so go for it, you know? To take into account that the Slan Mage Priest was pretty much the other type of banner bearer that you could have for the Lizardmen. Bastilladon, again, nothing's changed. I'm not trying to actually brush these off very quickly, it's just because, yeah, nothing's really changed in terms of naming convention. Now, with this kit, we've got the Pterodon Riders and the Ripodactyl Riders. Both of them are from the same box, but not only that, pay attention to the kit if you do pick this one up, as one of the Skinks is very drastically different, and that's because Tic-Tac-Toe is from this very same box. Skink Oracle on a Troglodon, again, very popular unit, very recently released in Total War Warhammer, and yeah, I mean, the Troglodon just looks really, really cool, you know? The Saurus Allblood on a Carnosaur is actually a named character. This is Kropgar, so if you want Kropgar and Grimlock, you've got the character available, it's in a plastic kit too. And lastly, we've got the Saurus Scar Veteran on Carnosaur, which, yeah, Old Blood or a Scar Veteran, and yeah, this is the replacement if you don't want to have Krokgar mounted, as you can actually have them on foot too, so it's very possible. Okay, now let's talk about the Skaven, and again, the large majority of their old army book is still available, so if you're a Skaven fan, it might be a good time to start jumping in. First, we have this Claw Lord in particular, which is actually Queek Headtaker. Now, I can be 100% certain that Queek is not alive during this point in the timeline, so you can use this as a Skaven Warlord. Same thing as the Skaven Deathmaster, as that is Deathmaster Snickich's model, but yeah, he's definitely not alive because Skaven don't actually live that long, so use him as an assassin, I guess. Warlock Engineers, pretty much the same thing, they're just Warlock Engineers, and yeah, the model's pretty old, but yeah, they still fit their purpose. A Gracier is of course a Gracier, nothing really changes there. It's a good looking model, one of the best ones ever released to be honest. The other Claw Lord is basically your Skaven Battle Standard Bearer, which I do recommend if you're going to be playing a Skaven, because, yeah, you need a BSP, trust me. Plague Sensor Bearers, nothing's changed. Very, very old model, though. Really needs an update. Hope they get one soon. Night Runners, same thing. Nothing's really changed. You're going to notice that this is the same thing going on for the Skaven roster as we had for the Lizardmen. Plague Claw is actually a Plague Claw Catapult, so same thing once again. Plague Monks, a bit dated, but they hold up pretty well. You're going to want to use this if they stay as powerful as they were back in 8th edition, because they were a top tier unit. Clan Rats, no need to explain. You can have them as Skaven Slaves too, it's the same kit. So it's kind of like splitting the kit in half, as half the Skaven came armored and half of them came in uh, rags. Screaming Bell, once again, same thing. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's one of those pinnacle type of uh, units... Stormfiends, very doubtful that they'll be playable in Old World, as they were created during the End Times, like specifically for the End Times, but I mean, they're always fun to paint. I've actually got a number of them, and I use them very, very rarely. Gutter Runners, same thing as anything else. They're Gutter Runners, so nothing really changed there. The Arch Warlock is actually Ikit Claw, and Ikit Claw is definitely not alive during this point of the timeline, or at least I don't think so, unless he's magically kept himself alive and so on, but unless that's the case, you can use this as a Skaven Warlock, because, I mean, yeah, it's a cool model, isn't it? Doomflare, same thing, nothing's really changed, so you can use it as a Doomflare. Rat Orgos, Giant Racks, and Pack Masters. This is Rat Ogres, obviously, Giant Rats and Pack Masters, and nothing really changed here. The Rat Ogres kind of look bad. There was actually a newer version that was released at one point, and for some reason they took it out of rotation in favor of these. Don't know why, to be honest. Warp Lock Jezals, yep, yeah, Skaven Jezals, long range, firepower, old model again, but they hold up quite well in terms of look. Fankwall and Bone Ripper, I don't think we're going to see this version because obviously this is empowered Fankwall because of the end times, and obviously this is the Stormfiend version of Bone Ripper, so very, very doubtful. I'd much prefer the older one just to have a new cast, you know? Now, Doom Wheels, classic, nothing's really changed. This is a fairly new model, so I don't think we're going to get a new version anyway. Hell Pit Abomination, same thing, I mean, it's absolutely disgusting, and yeah, it looks absolutely great too. 
Warp Lightning Cannon, yep, again, new one version, looks awesome, and, I mean, it looks pretty damn cool. The Plague Furnace itself comes with a Plague Priest, so you can just put it on a smaller base and then use it for that. It's also in the same kit as the Screaming Bell, so you have a choice there, and you can play around and you could do a lot of conversions. Vermin Lords, I very much doubt that we're gonna see unless they go with a smaller variant, because these were the empowered n times one, or unless they this is just now the always looking, they always look like this type of thing, you know? Storm Vermin, classic, very cool, I mean, it's just awesome. It's very likely that we're just going to be using these anyway, because they are fairly new, and the kit just looks awesome. Scryer Acolytes are Poison Wind Globadiers, they are a very typical unit. This is actually, this cast itself is, um, it's a bit older than I am, or almost as old as I am. Bear in mind that I'm almost 30, but hey, it's held up incredibly well. Warp Grinders, same thing, everything's the same. Hey, it's the Skaven. Master Molder, this is actually a smaller character, which was based for Clan Molder. He's definitely not going to be alive. He'll be a character, I'm assuming, or a lore or hero choice. It, because, yeah, this is a cool character, I doubt we're going to be seeing him get put to rest because the model is quite iconic. Plague Priest. Okay, so this isn't actually a Plague Priest, this is Lord Skrork. And, yeah, again, Skrork's definitely not going to be alive during this point in the timeline, so just use him as a Plague Priest. Rattling Guns. Same thing, no need to explain it too much. Rat Swarms were cool, a uh, popular model, to be honest. A paint to paint, I think these are fine casts now, though. So they would be a little bit easier, but it's still fine cast and a lot of things can break very easily, so keep that in mind. And finally, the Warp Fire Thrower, which there was a new version, but I don't know. A lot of the newer casts that released near the end of 8th edition and at the start of Age of Sigma, they got removed for some reason. I honestly don't know why, but hey, Games Workshop must have their reason. Okay, let's move on to the Beastmen now. Thankfully, the Beastmen haven't really changed names, so everything here is what's available. There's a few things missing, of course, but we'll discuss that soon. The Tuscor Chariot is a Tuscor Chariot, nothing changes there. Good model, very dated, but still holds up quite well. Same thing as the Chaos Spawn, which can be used with the Warriors of Chaos Army too, but we're just going to mention it here. Best of Gores hold up very, very, very well, and to be honest, yeah, I mean, they're a top tier unit. Bull Gores did get a name change, as they're actually just Minotaurs. There's a few different weapon variants that you can get here, and there's a lot of customization options. The Gorgon himself is very much the same, so nothing really has changed there. And it's the same thing from the Saigor too. They're both in the same kit, so you can just pick what you want to build up. Jabberslife, nothing's changed either, and it's just one of those models that I hope they never change, because it's absolutely awesome as it is. Centigors, once again, perfectly fine, and yeah, nothing really changes there either. You're going to notice this throughout the whole Beastmen roster. Same thing as the Doom Ball, which, yeah... Nothing's changed, it's large, it's big, and I think it's fine cast, I'm not 100% too sure. The Great Bray Shaman can be used as a standard Shaman too, so you've got the Spellcaster variant as a Lord or a Hero choice. Same thing with the Beast Lord. Interestingly enough, the only variant for the Beast Lord here is with additional hand weapons, which I didn't really see that commonly on the tabletop. I'm not too sure why this is still in rotation. Razor Gore is exactly the same thing, and you can change it out for a Razor Gore Chariot if you wish, but that means that you need to buy two kits. Uh, I know, it's not great. Chaos Warhounds are exactly the same too, and you can use them for the Warriors of Chaos, so I'm only going to mention it here. It's a great kit, I think it's 10 in a box, so it's actually not too bad, as you normally put them out in groups of 5, so you get two full units for the price of one box. Ungore Raiders and Ungores come from the same box, so you've got some variety of what you want to use, different weapon loadouts and so on, and different tactics. And finally, Gores. Gores themselves, yeah, same thing. They've got different weapon options, so it's up to you what you want to use. And uh, Mostly, you use them with sword and board, but that's up to the player, to be honest. Okay, now we're going to start moving on to the Warriors of Chaos, and there's quite a decent amount of things to talk about. First up, we've got the Magister, which came out in Warhammer Quest, I believe, but many people used it as a Chaos Sorcerer of Zinch. I would have used it as a Demon, to be honest, as a Herald, but hey, that's up to the description of the player, of course. 
Wrathmongers were released during the end times, and the law kind of states that they've been there for a long time, so it could be that they'll be usable in Old World. They're actually a cool looking model, so I hope so. Chaos Sorcerer Lord, well, that pretty much answers everything. It also comes with a scenic square base, I believe, so it kind of does everything for you at the beginning. The Aspiring Deathbringer was also known as a Chaos Lord of Corn, so yeah, you could use that if you want, like, some god-themed characters. The same thing could be said about the Rotbringer Sorcerer, which was also always seen as the Chaos Sorcerer of Nurgle, so you've got a little bit of an option there. The Exalted Hero of Chaos is... Well, a hero of chaos. He's actually Kron the Conqueror, but I'm assuming that this character won't be alive during this point of the timeline. It's always a bit finicky when it comes to chaos, as they do tend to live a lot longer due to, well, you know, chaos. Now, we've got a standard exalted hero of chaos, which is, well, yeah, an exalted hero of chaos. Next, we have the Lord of Plagues, which many people used as a end times unit, I believe this was. I didn't really play a lot with Nurgle. Uh, but I think this was like one of those end times units. It fits on the square. It's actually got a scenic square base. Uh, I just can't remember what it exactly was. The exalted hero of chaos here is actually Wolfric the Wanderer. So if you want the character, you can. But again, I don't think that he'll be alive during this point. Same thing for Valkyrie the Bloody as we've got her here. She could have been alive. I'm not 100% too sure because the timeline has always been a bit strange with Warhammer Fantasy. Festus the Leech Lord, same thing. Could be alive, we're not 100% too sure. The timeline, again, it's such a massive issue when it comes to these characters. It's always the big issue when it comes to Chaos characters specifically. Those of mortals which are close to ascending to demonhood. The Cursling, again, another character. This is actually Village the Cursling. Uh, could be alive, we're gonna have to wait and see. It's all the issue with Games Workshop and inconsistent lore, let's just be honest about that. Got Rot Spume is a character from the end times, and I mean, he looks super cool, you know? Um, he could also be alive, it's again, once again referencing the inconsistent timeline. I know it sounds annoying, but yeah. Chaos Lord is a Chaos Lord, and one of the most interesting models they ever released for the Warhammer Fantasy range, to be honest. It just looks absolutely awesome. You can tell that he was very close to ascending to demonhood. Scar Bloodwrath. This character was alive for a long time in the lore, but was introduced during the end time, so again, could show up, but we don't know just yet. Chaos Chariot. It's a Chaos Chariot. It's also able to be used as a Gore Beast Chariot. So really it's up to the player as what they want to use it as. Either way it all works well. And you can also put the character on a base and make him a Chaos Lord because the model does look cool. Lord on a Demonic Mount is a Chaos Lord on a Demonic Mount. It's one of these things where you could pretty much kit bash as much as you wanted. It's one of the best looking models in the range too. Well, let's be honest, Chaos always had really good looking models. Next is Chaos Chosen, so yeah, high elite warriors, you could have them with different weapons too and so on, but I believe you needed to buy uh, different upgrade packs and so on, which I honestly didn't do because I didn't really use Chaos Chosen, they were kind of overcosted back in the day. Demon Prince, we can expect this for the Demons of Chaos too, uh, but yeah, it, like, it's, it's impossible to have a Chaos roster without Demon Princes. Chaos Marauder Horseman, very iconic unit, very popular back in the day. I've actually got a load of them that I still need to paint up because, uh, yeah, I was one of those guys that when I was testing out an army, I wouldn't paint up the army. But, yeah, very cool, still available, highly recommended if you're going to play as Chaos, and they're still the same. Chaos Warriors, still the same. It's actually a pretty fair price box. They give you 16 minis, and usually you didn't really need too many, so two boxes was fine. Chaos Sorcerer Lord on a Manticore, which also shares a kit with the Chaos Lord on a Manticore. It's a really iconic kit, and this is very similar to that of the Dark Elf, like I was talking about. If you have the spare character, you can easily just put it on a um, horse mount or whatever, so you can kind of switch, or of course magnetize, because that's always good too. Lord of Corn on a Juggernaut is a Chaos Lord of Corn on a Juggernaut. Again, simple enough to explain, still available, very iconic looking mini and very cool. Chaos War Shrine. This was a really cool unit on the tabletop as it was a buff unit which kind of helped your chances of getting more demon princes on the table. They look really awesome, like it is so stylized. I hope that this still makes it back into Old World because damn, 
Putrid Blight Kings have never really changed, exactly the same. A lot of the Warriors of Chaos stuff hasn't really changed name. This was introduced to the end times, but lore-wise they've existed for a while, so it's very likely that we'll see them, just because lore-wise, again, same thing. Dragon Ogre Shagoths are Dragon Ogre Shagoths. And yeah, long time in the lore, since the beginning of time essentially, so we're gonna see them. Same thing with Standard Dragon Ogres too, because yeah, you know, same thing. Chaos Knights, very popular unit, very stylized, very, very good looking to be honest. Like, they've aged incredibly well for what they are, and yeah, it's an old classic and hopefully usable very much. Okay, so All Gods Demon Spew. This is one of three characters which are pretty much from the same kit that was introduced in the end times. It would be cool to see them. Though, I don't know, it's it's very Nurgle-focused, and we're gonna have to wait and see, because I think the law introduced them fairly later in the timeline. It's just very rare when it comes to these things, like I said. Slaughter Brute, iconic, old-school monster. It's been here for a long, long time, and it will definitely have to come back, because, yeah, you know, this is super, super cool. It's also got the same kit as the Mutalith Vortex piece, which hasn't changed name. Personally, I prefer the Slaughter Brute, but that really depends on the player. They both look super, super cool, and yeah, I mean, like, they're, they're proper big monsters, you know? The Glockkin have been around in the lore for a long time, but I don't think that they'll be there at that point. Again, timeline issue is very, very bad when it comes to established characters that are known to live for hundreds of years. Skull Crushers, fantastic unit, they look absolutely amazing, and yeah, it's like a staple in corn armies, so yeah, we're gonna see them no questions asked. Now, Lord of Blights, again, a character that was introduced during the end times. I don't really remember what it was, because it was one of these things that just got released, and a lot of stuff just got released, and that's it, you know? But yeah, it's cool, it's awesome, it's got that awesome look. This could have actually actually been a proper Age of Sigmar model, and I could just be losing my mind. But you can easily stick it on a 25mm base and just call it a Chaos Lord of Nurgle, because, I mean, yeah, it's a Chaos Lord of Nurgle, you just can't spin it anywhere else. The Harbinger of Decay can either be a Chaos Sorcerer of Nurgle mounted, or a Chaos Lord of Nurgle mounted, it's really your choice. For that, just make it a Spellcaster, because, yeah, Spellcasters are usually better, and you can also have it with Chaos Armor, because that was a perk they had. And lastly, we've got Chaos Marauders. Definitely needs a new kit in the future, but they've aged fairly well, and it's a classic and iconic kit. These are your basic frontline units, and, I mean, why not? They look cool. They look a little dated. Very old-school, um... Viking vibes more than anything else, but hey. I can't believe I forgot about Hellstriders of Sunesh, but yeah, fast cavalry, Suneshi, awesome spears, and also very kinky whips, because yeah, Suneshi. Oh, and the Cockatrice too, but like literally barely anyone has ever used one as far as I've seen, and I've played a lot of Warhammer Fantasy, like from 4th all the way up, and yeah, even like during the height of 8th, nothing. And now we have the Demons of Chaos, the last possible faction that you can buy minis for actively before we start getting into some other details. First off, we have Kairos Fateweaver, a very popular character, and yes, he was around during this time, so yeah, we're gonna see him. The Herald of Sunesh too, as of course, that's a very common character that you see in Suneshi armies. It's quite a dated model, but still looks pretty good. Poxbringer is pretty much a Herald of Corn, so you're pretty much sorted there if you want a Herald for that. Seekers of Sunesh is, yeah, cavalry for Sunesh, fast moving, quite hard hitting, very skirmishing based, it really depends on how you want to use them. The Bloodmaster Herald of Corn is a Herald of Corn, so again, very simple. Flamers of Zinch, again, another iconic unit, and you're going to notice that pretty much anything that shows up on this video is still available and hasn't really changed much. Same as the Nurglings, which, yeah, they got a bit of an update around 8th edition, and they look pretty cool for it. The Changeling is a very popular character, and he is quite old in the lore, so I can assume that we'll probably be likely to see him again. If not, you can use him as a Herald of Zinch. Demonets of Sunesh, I mean, yeah, frontline Sunesh units, unless more stuff gets added in. I don't really see these going out of fashion, as they recently got the whole box treatment for Age of Sigmar. Skulltaker has a new model. This is not the original model for Skulltaker, but... Yeah, it's still Skulltaker, and I don't think they're going to make another one specifically for Old World when this one is still just as good. 
Plague Bearers and Nurgle. Frontline units for Nurgle, again, typical. We're not going to really see anything different. I think they were updated for Age of Sigma. I know they got the box treatment, but they might have had the plastic variant for 8th edition. Karanak, the Hound of Vengeance, is Korn's personal favorite. Bloodhound, again, new model, but fits on a square base. Well, rectangular, because, yeah, these ones were rectangular. But, yeah, it, it fits, it's perfectly fine, and they're not going to make a new one just for that. Demons of Korn need an update. It's been a long, long time, and the model has been very dated, but it's still usable in 40k, it's still usable in Age of Sigma, so it's likely still going to be usable for Old World. Horrors of Zinch, exactly the same thing, not much really changes there. Same as the Skullmaster, Herald of Korn, where it's just mounted, it's just a mounted Herald, and, yeah, nothing really changes. The Beast of Nurgle, same thing once again, though these are really cool, and if you're going to play Nurgle, they're, they're just really, really fun, you know? Herald of Zinch on a Burning Chariot, again, it's just a Herald, but a mounted version, so always fun. Burning Chariot of Zinch, once again, same thing, nothing really changes. The Exalted Flamer, same thing again. Epidemius, yeah, he should be around. He's a character who's been a long time in the lore, so I don't think that we're not going to see him... For, because he's very popular. Flesh Hounds, okay, new model, but again, they fit on their intended bases, they look much better now, they've been brought up to a more proper standard in terms of quality by Games Workshop style, so yeah, no problem. Same thing with the Fiends, they fit on their bases, I've actually just recently built a few of them because I'm working on something for, potentially for Armies on Parade, so yeah, they work on their square bases, like, no questions asked. Plague Drones of Nurgle, 8th edition, perfectly fine, they've aged fairly well, and they're still usable to this day. Soul Grinder. A lot of people don't like this because, yeah, it looks very 40k. It was kind of like the bridge between Warhammer Fantasy and 40k and still usable in Age of Sigma. So, pretty much just depends. I think it'll probably be seen just to keep the link there. Kind of like a throwback to old lore. Blood Crushers. Well, if we're going to see Skull Takers, we're going to see Blood Crushers because they're an iconic unit, so I doubt that anything's going to change. The Lord of Change was updated for Age of Sigma. It's not really a Warhammer Fantasy mini, but then again, if they've updated it and it's such an iconic unit, well, character here, we're going to see it like that for Old World. It just makes more sense than just bringing back the old one. Scarbrand, very old, definitely going to show up because iconic. Bellacore had a new model and... Well, yeah, it just makes sense. Like, it's likely that this is the one we're going to see for Warm Free, too. So, it's kind of like cross promotion, but more on that in a little bit. Great Unclean One, updated for Age of Sigma, too. But again, cross promotion, big boy. We've already seen this look there in the trailer for Warm Free. And if Games Workshop are smart, they're going to do the cross promotion stuff. Blood First of Corn. This was updated for the end times. They look pretty cool as they do now. The old one's a bit derpy, and I just think that this is probably the best way for them to go. Keeper of Secrets, updated for Age of Sigma. Much better now than they used to look, and if everything else is getting the big upgrade, then they deserve one too. Plus, they look pretty, man. They look really pretty. Seeker of Sinesh Chariot, again, same thing. Chariots, very common with Sineshi armies. We wouldn't really see it any other way. The Mask had an update, but yeah, I mean, again, why go back to an older look? So if you've got the older look, you can still use them because they said old minis is fine, but this one just looks so much better. Screamers of Zinch, nothing's really changed with this model, but then again, it's quite iconic in just artwork and stuff, so I don't think it's ever going to change. Skull Cannon of Corn, very same thing. And this also shares the same kit as the Blood Flow. Now, I did kind of blast for the Demons of Chaos, but truth be told, these models, like, rarely, rarely change, so a lot of people are already used to them. And there's a few things that we need to discuss before we actually end this video, which is, what, close to an hour now? It's actually one of my longest videos in a long time. So, of course, there's some missing races and other units. We're missing a lot of units from, say, for example, the Orcs and Goblins, some other stuff from, of course, the Wood Elves, the any elf faction, in, in fact, is missing quite a lot of stuff. We're, of course, missing the Bretonians, the Chaos Dwarves, and the Tomb Kings. Basically, that was all squatted, and if we're going to see that return, it's going to be new miniatures. Now, yes, a lot of these factions will get new minis, but Games Workshop are very slow to replacing stuff, so you should really... If you're looking to play Old World, of course, buy minis now, as you can use older stuff and nobody's really going to tell you that you can't use the older stuff when it gets updated. 
I use a lot of classic stuff, especially like classic clan rats for slaves and all that, and it just fits, you know? It's as long as it looks like Warhammer and it feels like Warhammer, that's the most important thing. And of course, everything here is Warhammer. It is honestly better to get started now if you're thinking about any of the factions which we've covered here, as, well, let's be honest, when it comes to Games Workshop, Look, they do a new release, and then it sells out within minutes, and then nothing comes out for like three months after, because they have to do a made-for-order afterwards, and so on. It's going to be a bit of an issue, so if you already have any of these factions in mind, I mean, you might as well start collecting them now and getting them out of there. Now, of course, big disclaimer here, not all these models will be playable back there. We don't know exactly just yet. They did say that we could use our old armies, so it's very likely that we will be able to, but we need some clarification. Of course, anything which is quite iconic, like a Black Orc, you know, or a Blood Letter, a Slaneshi Demonette, that stuff, Chaos Warriors, these, these things you could obviously expect to be playable. Maybe not a named character, and maybe not a unit that's so out there like a Soul Grinder, but pretty much anything else, especially they're usable in Age of Sigma and Warhammer 40k when it comes to demons and stuff, because, you know, these things are backward compatible, forward compatible, or whatever you want to call it. It would be incredibly stupid of Games Workshop not to allow us to use the demon units, like the Blood Throne and stuff like that, because, yeah, there were Warhammer Fantasy minis, so they're going to be Warhammer Fantasy minis. The stuff that named characters which, yeah, wouldn't be alive, like I said, use them as a proxy for a general and stuff like that, because, yeah, I mean, that's how it always works, and it will give your characters a bit more of a fleshed-out feel. So in terms of the stuff that's missing, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to pick them up at a Games Workshop store or any resellers and so on, because they're long out of print. Though if you're looking for anything specific, especially something that hasn't been mentioned on this list because it's not available anymore, well, you know, eBay, trading websites and so on, those are the best way to go. Obviously, also keep an eye out on any potential websites that are friendly local game stores, like for example, Element Games, which I promote quite heavily, as they obviously do discounts. You're going to start off with a fresh new army, yeah, you're going to want to get some stuff discounted. It's not a shameless plug. If you can find it cheaper somewhere else, do so. The main thing is, it's going to be quite expensive, especially if you're trying to build up an army. Second thing is, don't go full ham, because you don't know what the points are going to cost and so on, so there's no point point buying like eight boxes of Chaos Warriors if your army's not going to use eight boxes of Chaos Warriors. I mean, if you want to try out different army loadouts and so on, you're perfectly fine for that. But yeah, you know, this is not a cheap hobby. Okay, now, big thing here is bases. Bases, especially square bases, are hard to come by now. It's likely going to be a long time since Games Workshop starts selling their own again, because, yeah, they're a little slow with these types of things. Some of the old Warhammer Fantasy kits still bring square bases, by the way, but the majority of them don't, because they've been updated, they've got new box art, and they've done away with the squares. So... It's a thing that you need to look online. There's loads of different websites, like for example, Green Stuff World, that do their own custom bases, which are very much almost identical to those of Games Workshop. You can already find scenic bases there too, so you don't even have to paint the base. It just really depends on what you actually want to do with them. So yeah, and they're fairly well priced for a decent amount. You just have to look online. eBay also has resellers which do that. eBay also has a lot of people which just want to sell off their old bases because they might have moved to Age of Sigma and rebased their minis. Now, of course, these models now won't have the bases that they need and you'll need a base chart. If you check in the description below, you'll be able to find a chart which will say what they are in square, what they are in round, and so on. So if you're looking for anything specific, like say, for example, a Chaos Chariot, which has a 50 by 100 millimeter base, or a Marauder of Chaos, which is a 25 millimeter base, and so on, you can find that information for pretty much... Well, every race and faction that was playable in 8th edition? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It's everything from 8th edition, so you'll have a frame of reference there without a problem. Now, we still don't know if these base sizes will be the official ones for that of Old World, though I'm assuming that it'll be the same thing, considering that they said, yeah, you can use your old armies and stuff like that, because sometimes rebasing stuff is very difficult, especially with a lot of the older minis. So, yeah, 
You never know. What I would suggest, and I know this is a bit of a hassle sometimes, but it might be good to invest in magnets and magnetizing your minis. All you literally need to do is drill a hole in their feet or whatever and just put a magnet in there so you can easily switch out from different bases and so on. That's what a lot of people do when they still play Warhammer Fantasy, but they also play Age of Sigma, so they can just keep moving their armies about, or just generally people who like to switch scenic bases for one reason or another, you know, it's just some people do that. Better to magnetize just in case the base sizes do change and then it saves you the hassle of having to break up the former bases or potentially breaking a miniature and having to repair it and so on because it can be a massive hassle. Like I've started magnetizing a few of my characters and my units and so on just in case and it's going to be those races that I know I'm going to be playing. And lastly to any old god who might be watching this video, you've got a pile of shame, I know you do, I have one too. It might be time to start painting up your miniatures because eventually when they start releasing new minis you're gonna want those too, and so am I. And yeah, we should probably start making room. But with all that being said, thank you so much for listening to this video, it's been a hell of a rant for about over an hour, but hey I'm hyped up for Warhammer the Old World and I have been planning this video for quite some time now. A big thank you to our sponsors Surfshark VPN because this video was only very possible because of them. Remember guys, you can get three months for free and 83% off by just literally checking out the description below and all the details are over there. So thank you so much everyone and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Have a good day. I'm going to sleep. I've been up all night working on this. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby-based products, not just Warhammer, for 10-25% to off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code, which is also in the description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to our higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.